Hello everybody, and uh, this is a short little note to make before the video starts. Um, I recorded this over a year ago. It's a very old video I did with a friend at the time during the Silfco Mob days. If you don't know what the Silfco Mob is, it's linked on all the channels. You can go check it out. It was a failed attempt at a collaboration channel with up reaching about eight people at one point for Pokemon stuff. There's still a bunch of great videos on there. Um, you can find a bunch of dead or still barely a lot of channels. The person from this has moved channels, but they're still live doing stuff. Not a lot of Pokemon, though. Um, his, their name right now in this video, not right now in real life, is Diglett's Other Half. Their mic is fucking terrible. And the reason why I kind of stopped doing stuff with him because he kind of fucking pissed me off. He's kind of the reason why the Moemon Let's Plays stopped. But... We had some pretty good ideas in this. So, make, uh, please, if you could put up with the cringe of his bad mic and me not being as experienced as I am now and stuff, there's some amazing fucking theories in here. Uh, the timing of this is pre or as, but post X and Y. So, Hoopa has, like, just gotten leaked. And we went off about stuff like that. And you'll find a lot of stuff here that kind of inspired the undertones of the Gen 6.5 slash 7 Super Discussion. So, if you watch these videos, there's two. Uh, we recorded... No, wait, no. There's only one. Did we record two? I don't know. Um, no, I think there's two. There's definitely two. Um, if you watch these, I've been calling them From the Vault, Mythologicast, because the original name of the show was Mythologicast. Um, enjoy. Uh, it's gonna be a ride. Phew. How one conversation about Hoopa turned into a concept that would revolutionize the mythical world of Pokemon. Hello, everybody, and welcome to my first podcast here on the Silfco channel with my friend... What's going down, dudes? It's Diglett's other half, and I'm here on the Self Coach channel to bring you the Mythologic Cast. What is the Mythologic Cast, Pat? Well, we were in a Skype call, and we thought of something, and I went insane and thought it was the most brilliant idea ever, and you made it actually make sense. And now we're going to talk about that concept and several others in episodes of this podcast. All right. So, you want to start? I think you would with starting with the the idea that spawned all of this. Okay. Who the fuck is Hoopa? Right, right. So me and Pat were talking Pat's. about different theories and myths in the Pokemon world. So and I was bringing up there was the one entangled this video where he mentioned the connection, possible connection between Mirage Island and Hoopa. For those of you who don't know, Hoopa is one of the new legendary Pokemon of X and Y that hasn't been re released yet. And Which, recorded. yeah, it's just, the, <laughs> there's so much stuff in X and Y that is absolutely not used yet. So, until Z or X2 and Y2 come out, or whatever they're doing. Or until like, they bring it inside in oh, Mega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, like they're doing with Diancie. Yeah, I have no idea what they're going to do, because the formula has been uh, completely obliterated with Black and White 2. Yeah. We have no idea what they're going to do, but when they do it, there is so much in Kalos that's been left to explore. Right, but uh, there are hackers have found information within the game of Hoopa's information, and it says that Hoopa uses the rings. I'm gonna just show a picture of it right now. Hoopa uses the rings around itself to manipulate space and time, and it says the rings are so powerful they can even move entire islands. And immediately, Pat went insane. First of all, I know that the Hoopa thing has been around forever. I just never bothered to look it up because I thought it'd be spoilery, but then they never released it for this generation, so okay, it's not really a spoiler. Well, it's still a spoiler, but it's like it's like uh, Super Smash Brothers leaks. It's like, it's fun. Yeah. More fun than it would be just finding out naturally. So, here's what I said. Huh, so Hoopa moves around continents, but don't we already have one that does that? I always thought that Regigigas moving continents was kind of stupid and didn't make a lot of sense. But yeah, in fact, I, I actually looked this up earlier. It only mentions it in two Pokedex entries, the Diamond and Pearl one and the Y one. All the other ones just mention how it made the other Regis. Yeah, which both of those 
don't make sense because first off, humans made the Reggies and then they made Regigigas after the three Reggies. That's why Snowpoint Temple exists. Snowpoint Temple did not come before the other two. It's said on the inscriptions. So already Pokedex entry is proven false. But the thing about moving the continents, it seems ridiculous at its current state. But then again, when we fight Dialga and Palkia, they seem not like things that can control space and time. Got me thinking, what if the, po- the, tra- the Pokemon we face in the games are weaker versions than their primal mythological selves? And at some point, Regigigas actually did move the fucking continents. And he's just weaker now. Same with Dialga, Palkia, and everyone else. Like, the Pokedex entry about Yuxi uh, wiping out people's memories by opening it, their eyes seems ridiculous. Same, same thing with, like, uh, same thing with, like, um, the back of, an, of a Shed Ninja. But what if certain Pokemon back in the day were these primal things that had literally godly powers and all this rumor and stuff, which seems ridiculous for a tiny little spirit thing could actually be possible back in the day we already have primal Groudon and kyogre so that's confirmed that there have been previous versions of these pokemon back when they were at their prime for instance you have Groudon and kyogre who fought each other years ago in such an epic battle that it literally shook the world you have a battle like that back in Sutopolis city it's it is a, a little big but it's not that big yeah Groudon's on a fucking pebble like <laughs> It doesn't look like the, they're actually gods. But here's the thing. The first ever Primal Evolution was in a mystery dungeon game with Primal Dialga. And while you fight Dialga, nothing actually happens with space and time. Uh, except in the manga. But when you fight Primal Dialga, he literally has his powers actually activate. And you get sent into different time periods. And it's in, it's insane. So we know that these legendaries are far are clearly capable of this stuff, just not in their current forms. Right, and then there's going to be the one person in the comments who says, well, it's not actually Primal Dialga because the Japanese version is Dark Dialga. It doesn't matter what it's called. The point is, it's a more powerful version of a legendary, which really is the whole point of the Yeah, that's the whole thing. point. Yeah, and the, right. old, the only reason he's Dark is because dark in Japanese means evil, and he was being an asshole. That's why it is dark. The dark type is actually the evil type. That's why there's no fucking light type. Because mm. it would make no sense. It would have to be good type. <laughs> oh, mistranslations. Anyway. Besides, who would want to eat? Well, a lot of people want evil type. Point being... Why would you have two Pokemon doing the same thing? And even more so, I start thinking about Vulcanian, who and Entei, and Entei, Entei, Vulcanian, and Heatran. And Groudon, technically. Yeah, because I always like love to think about Heatran as what the fuck is he doing up at Stark Mountain? He's just sitting there, and he doesn't really have any lore connected to him. He just powers a volcano. How could one volcano be so important that it needs a legendary? And then things started to get interesting. The concept of several Pokemon all having to do with volcanoes and continental drift and explosions and protecting certain mountains. At this point, though, we let off that trail for a bit because we realized we need more information. Do you remember what we went to next? All I remember was you, the Shinto ruins, didn't we? Exactly. And you went off about unknown. Can you do that? Oh, uh, sir. For those of you who don't know the classic theory that is the unknown Arceus theory, the unknown Arceus theory stipulates that um, Arceus are what un- um, Arceus used the unknown to sort of shape the universe. And this is proved through two ways. One, in the actual Shinto ruins, when you create Dialga, Palkia, and Giratina, just a wave of unknown appear everywhere. And, and, then there's the- and oh, you need to learn to, co- to cooperate, uh, to co-podcast, because you leave off on spots and then people come in right in the other spots, so that sounds so cool. Yeah. <laughs> and the second thing 
is when you fight when you fight Arceus, the theme that plays is an inverted t- uh, tune of the theme in the Ruins of Alf. Same with the the Azure flute. It all comes back to unknown. Which is interesting because the Shinto ruins are the first real connection. Well, therefore, a real first connection between two different regions. Well, that have the nothing in contact with each other. Like exactly, they're really far away. It makes no sense. Spear Pillar is in the middle of the continent. Stark Mountain is the northernmost po- point in any Pokemon game. This what what links them? How is that possible? And then I remi- remembered other things. Um, in Unova region, there are caves that lead directly to Sinnoh. That is where you fight the lake spirits in Black and White too. It, why would there be a tunnel that would lead back to Sinnoh? It, clearly, that's not possible. And another thing, in the Kalos region, there are three caves that are that are symbolic to the exact ca- same caves at the lakes in Sinnoh. Why, like, and the other thing. The temples of Hoenn are linked to this to the Snowpoint Temple in Sinnoh. Why does every region, even the one so far away as to be in New York City, have relations to Sinnoh? Physical connections. That makes no sense. And of course, you already have the connection between Johto and Kanto, so you can also count Kanto as being connected to Sinnoh. Fucking sure, yeah. Like, how are these all are these places connected? It's clearly not by boat. Mm-hmm. And we, besides, we have all these places being super ancient. They weren't even boats made before they were created. Maybe the boats came after they were created. How would they interact with each other? Exactly. How can you have Pokemon in the same regions that developed from long ass times ago if they, if the land Pokemon couldn't cross over? This ain't the Galapagos Islands. Come on. Mm-hmm. Now, some mm-hmm. people would say that the Shinto ruins in these other places are connected by interdimensional link. Like in the manga. But for once, I'm going to say, fuck the manga. Let's stay to strict game canon. There's no proof that you go through any kind of dimensional rift in the in the uh, Shinto ruins. Even the if only... you do... All right. Never yeah, even All if right. you do do the thing with the unknown where you like black out and come onto a different floor, you still, can, you still know with the map and everything that you're in Johto. But you're somehow connected to Sinnoh. Or maybe mm-hmm. you do end up in Sinnoh. Oh yeah, you go you go into the, the ruins of Valve, You black out, unknown appear, and then you're you come out the door, and there's fucking Cynthia, and you're in snow, and it's Sinnoh. How did you get to Sinnoh? And even better proof of this, if you look on the map, why you're at the Shinto ruins, it doesn't say, oh, you're in Johto. You are literally shown out of Johto, in an upward direction. You're not and, Johto anymore. Yep, you're the old- north. <laughs> yeah. That's where Sinnoh is. And then... Exactly. You take it back to the continent movers and the volcano Pokemon. Why are there so many of them? And then I got the fucking insane idea. The most insane idea that I've ever gotten. It was so insane that it was completely sane. I thought... Why... Mount Coronet. Why Sinnoh? Why Arceus? If Mount Coronet is where Arceus created the world, why isn't it in the center of the world? And then I thought, what if it was? Diglett, some, some, some epic tunes. There you go. What if Mount Coronet was the center of the world? And every other important continent and important relic was connected to it. Like how we can find dinosaur fossils on the same point, uh, coasts of the same two continents. of Different coasts of different continents, but the same bones. What if that was, just like with Pangaea, that they were connected a long time ago? And this isn't continental drift. This is sheer power. Because Unova is nowhere near the Kanto region, the Johto region. How could... Japan be all the way over here, Unova be all the way over here, and Kalos be all the way over here, but they still were connected. Extreme continental change. Exactly, and this is actually something I was thinking about, and you brought it up in an earlier Skype call we did. Um, The regions themselves 
aren't that big. You can literally bike across them very easily. So it makes sense that they were originally part of something bigger. And got yes, split they're apart. very, very small. Kalos, you can look on the map and it takes us of a significant, uh, like in the scene where the super weapon is fired. You can see that it's a significant part of the world's hemisphere. Uh, it's a significant part of the horizon. And it looks very big. But what the planet's really small. It would make sense with a lot of things. You can bike over a third of Kalos or half of Kalos um, in mere seconds um, on uh, the longest road. The westward road from Lumio City. And you can take the height of the character... Measure it up to another person's character, ride the bike up next to them, and measure the height of you, and then use your height, the official height, and by pixels, turn them sideways and measure how long the bike is. And once you have how many bikes, how, like how long a bike is, you can measure paces. And if you can measure paces, you can measure the average speed of the bike, which moves at a constant rate. Then you can measure how far you travel in how much time, and you can drive over that route, and it's probably not even a mile. France right. is many, many miles across. This could only mean that either the cave is a million miles long or Kalos is a state size. Right, and then you have Kalos being one of the bigger regions. It's still being has three separate parts of its Pokedex. Exactly. So, of course, Pat, being the genius that he is in air quotes, oh. <laughs> he Air came quotes, up with this bitch. Pokemon Pangea theory, which all the regions were originally connected, and you have with Sinnoh being at the center. You have all these different re re um, ruins, caves, temples that all connect it. And we also didn't mention the Arceus plates, which you find in every region. Every region. Why would they be in every region? And this goes into the fate theory. In what, well, like, the idea that they put that Arceus and the unknown put the plates in specific areas, not just in every corner of the world. Because if they were just scattered out randomly, like in the anime, in that stupid movie, um, <laughs> why would you have specific sets of every plate in every region? Why would you have the entire 14 catalog, and then with fairy, you know, people who would bring up the fairy plate, it still exists in Sinnoh and Johto, but in Sinnoh and everywhere else, they just don't know what the fuck it's for because they don't know what fairy type moves are yet. And actually I wanted to bring that up in a later theory, which I'm going to discuss in a later video. Awesome. That yeah, but again, so yeah, all the regions were once connected, but that doesn't really explain much. Yeah, that's a okay ish theory. But really, what does it lead to? Well you have to think about something. Why were the regions separated? I mean, okay, all the regions were together. We know that naturally in the real world, this, the regions were several about volcanic activity that mm -hmm. happened naturally. But these are Pokemon. These did it purposefully. And why you can reason. tell that's yeah, why you can tell that's that it's purposeful is these ruins are not millions of years old. Continental drift takes a long ass time, longer than any of these structures would have lasted. Which means that <laughs> all of this history happened in very recent years. Like, the Pokemon world could not be longer than 4,000 years old? 5,000? 10,000? Exactly. The War of the AZ, the longest thing we've had. Well, of course, you had the fossil Pokemon for yeah, millions of millions Yeah, of but years that's, old. that's... Honestly, I'm just going to cop out here and say that the fossils were actually aliens. That explains it. Anyway. No, 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 that still explains it because... Technically, those were back when really humans weren't around. They couldn't build temples. It, yeah, fucking, yeah, sure. Fossil Pokemon came before humans or something. Who fucking knows? The, the longest really farther go period we've had for any human-related activity was AZ mentioning 3,000 years ago there was a big war, which is then lead to what I like to call... The, the nuke everything theory. The That's nuke everything theory. It. That's what no. I'm going to call it. Everybody like gets it... nukes theory. I was going to call it the Arceus gets pissed theory. <laughs> yeah. I'm sticking with that. I, yeah. What I decided to do was, there has to be a reason for the reasons to separate. So what's the other big theory that everyone's been talking about? 
Before what is the law? Ah, oh, you fucking spoiled it. I'm going to pretend ah. you didn't. Okay. Uh, maybe they didn't hear it. What is the oldest, longest, hardest, erectest, penisile theory that has ever existed <laughs> other than you being under the truck? That one line of dialogue from that stupid generation, Gen 1 and Lieutenant Surge's field, that he was in a war. <clears throat> and everyone... You, electric Pokemon saved me during the war! The war. Why would there be a war in a Pokemon game? This, this makes no sense. I mean, we hadn't seen the the Lucario movie yet. It, it was ridiculous. And then people looked, and there were no dads. The only the only male figures were hikers, boys, scientists, gym leaders, which were pretty young or very old, uh, elders, and uh fucking yeah like there were no 18 to 23 year old men and you know there are hospitals and gyms everywhere exactly yeah it is very popular theory that the entire reason that the pokemon league exists is to train the common populace to defend themselves be in a constant state of having a ready military in the form of children like you think that you're playing this game and you're just having fun going on an adventure, but what if you're really just being raised to fight evil organizations? Like, the whole reason that governments can take down these systems is the trainers do it for them. They don't have to have a military police force. They just have to have a lot of kids that have good morals and they can fight for themselves. You don't need a police. The only Another police th in existence are protecting private property. That's it. Hmm? The only other police we see are in the anime, and that's anime exclusive. Yeah, fuck that. Exactly. And another thing, for all the professors, where, why are they have saying, oh, get us information about these Pokemon? They're freaking Pokemon professors. Where did all their information go? It was lost during the war. Uh, I was, yeah, sure. But I was more going to say that they might have been told to research and given the technology to make Pokedexes and stuff because of government funding. Huh. Back huh. when there was a government. Now that it's just a bunch too. of trainers. Um, oh. So you think, well, like, that's stupid. The parents, like, if your mom looks 30 to 40 or maybe 50 in some generations, I don't know, then your husband, your father would be that kind of age which means that if they were sent in at the youngest age possible 18 or 17 or maybe even kids because pokemon um it would it would have only been like 10 to 20 years ago to 30 years ago that this war happened but then because it has to be enough time for it to die down and everyone to be chill and enough time where you don't see new fathers already taking place which you do get the very lowest form of that with the pokey fans and stuff um so, how could we have continental distortion and wars happening within 20 years? And then we say, what if it's not the only war that's happened? Yeah, X and Y comes around and brings in... Well, it actually starts with Gen 5, with the Musketeer Pokemon saying they defended the Pokemon in a war against humans. I mean, okay, that's Pokemon injuries. You can't exactly take that as legitimate proof sometimes. But, then you but have... they are exactly based off the three musketeers. Hashtag four. Uh, yeah. And they clearly have been around for a long time and have been protecting Pokemon the Nova region. We have protectors of Pokemon all over the place like that. Yep. And then you have the freaking uh, X and Y who fly out say, there was a war that happened 3,000 years ago. And I'm pretty sure... That Lieutenant Surge is not 3,000 years old. Precisely. So, there have to have been multiple wars. Mm -hmm. so multiple this, wars. This brings and, us to yeah. us. Does this bring us to the nuke everything theory? I, I'm still calling it the RCS piss theory. No, no. We're talking about something completely different. Oh. You're, you're thinking about the Continental Explosion stuff. I'm saying the nukes, everyone oh. gets nukes theory. Oh, right. So this well, one's well, great. I, I fucking I. love this. I, no, I, I got to explain it. I love it so much. Okay, so fine. AZ built the super weapon. 
How many other super weapons are, ex are in existence? A lot when you think about it. The red and blue orbs are very ancient super weapons. Um, a very recent super weapon would be Genesect. Why do each region? Why does each region have this have a super weapon or multiple? Mewtwo is very very powerful. Why does he have a Mega Stone? Two Mega Stones that are completely natural and have been no proven proof that they it were artificially made. Mewtwo's made in a laboratory, but they say it's based off Mew's offspring or whatever the fuck, or Mew's genetic clone. And why is Genesect uh, able to be as powerful when he was a fossil Pokemon? Um, this You get to this point where it's like, everyone has nukes. AZ had a nuke and people have been... Like, what if Lysander booting it up isn't the first time that someone's brought it back to life and used it? And don't what if the it's red not the chain. Yeah. What if it's not the... Uh, yeah, and the red chain? Fucking, we want to fight a war? I'll just create a, a second Dialga and fight with it. Like, mm -hmm. that kind of crazy stuff. Every region has this kind of ancient technology. And, by the way, what if this isn't the first time that people have had a mute to before? And... Yeah, sure, you can't really clone a Mewtwo in ancient technology, but what if you had actual Mewtwo's, like, original Mewtwo's that walked around that are what Mewtwo is based off of genetically, and that there's this hidden code in Mew to make a Mewtwo? And what if Genesect was put in a specific situation or was had certain specific genes that were made just so that he could be revived later? Why does Mewtwo have these Megastones when they knew that he wouldn't be used again until he was revived? Why is it possible that you could make this super weapon that kills everyone? Why is why the red, blue, and jade orbs? Why the Snowpoint Temple? Humans have been using Pokemon powers to make nukes for a long-ass time, for at least 3,000 years. And they have been using them over and over and over again, completely obliterating each other. But how could they have a war between all... Because it clearly wasn't only war... They weren't internal wars, a lot of these. So how could they have wars with each other if they didn't have steamboats and shit to get across water? They were all connected very recently. Mm -hmm. Now can I get to the Arceus gets pissed theory? Go. Okay, so as Pat said, the basic concept of the whole nuke situation is that we have all of these big super weapons... The red, and the red and blue, the ruby sapphire orbs, you have the red chain, whatever, whatever, whatever. So all the regions were at war. This brings me to a little thing I like to, the RCS is piss theory. You have all these giant god Pokemon seeing all this war happening over and over and over and over again. And really, if you're a god, you realize, well, this is going to end horribly for everyone. So you have Heatran, Groudon, Entei, etc., etc. All the oh, of Goku by one. the way, forgot to say, um, the uh, the whole thing where it's like you know the theory where it's the EV the original evolutions are the Pokemon that were burnt alive in the Suicune Entei Raikou thing. Oh yeah, we forgot to mention the tower. How it, we said it was destroyed during yeah. a war. Yeah. And they said exactly how long ago that was, several hundred years or something, or 70 or whatever years. 150. 150? Okay. What if the Pokemon that were burnt in the tower and everything, what if that's a repeated amount of these three mythological Pokemon, Raikou, Entei, and Suicune, that kept dying and regenerating over and over again, but because of Ho-Oh and this, the fucking sacred ash bringing them back to life over and over again and people using them because we have game canon that people can ride and use sorry ride and use the legendary beasts like they're also nukes mm -hmm. that people have tamed and legendary pokemon have brought back just so people can fuck again fuck shit up again and of course if you're a god and these are your subjects you'd be very mad so Arceus has Heatran, Groudon, Entei, and the Hoopa. other Pokemon. Oh, right. No, Hoopa's the second part. Okay. This is, they have them split the continents. 
At what point? Mountains and volcanoes. They split things off at that point. And it, you can see, like, you can think of a Heatran blowing up the mountain. Yeah, he probably has that power, but he doesn't have the power to destroy entire, like, make sh coastlines. But the primals. So what if you had this one supercontinent with five or six points at, like, in a hexagon? And then just, like, okay, here's the easiest way to visualize this. The battle arena and the battle area and the whole area northeast of Sinnoh, where Heatran is, imagine a single Pokemon shooting up fire blasts that go up and come down in an arc, like the super weapon from X and Y, and creating a circle of destruction the size of the circumference of that area northeast of Sinnoh, and just obliterating these coastlines and separating the places by water. And then after that doesn't work, because people manage to get boats again, you have to step up the game another level. You? Yeah. So then you have Regigius, who literally pulls continents, with, according to its Pokedex entry. And no, then you have... according to its primal power. Fine. Primal power. And then you have Hoopa, who is said at its maximum power to move islands. You have them moving all of these islands away from each other, specifically... So that they can't go to war again. Which, honestly, if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. And because we have these Pokemon that can make these explosive wide destructions and minute critical changes, like Selby, a lot of its work is like minute single changes, you can have this continental explosion and ripping apart without destroying everything. Because these are Pokemon we're talking about. Right. But obviously, of course, we know for a fact that you have Lieutenant Surge who says, of course, there was a war. So Within obviously, his lifespan. Right. So obviously, the war kept going on between different regions. But that Probably with, like, flying Pokemon and teleporting Pokemon and getting boats and shit. Right, like every region really has a boat. Yeah, and every region has very advanced boats and boats that probably went back a long time. Like, if you think about um, if Pokemon is the year 2010 or to, 20, to 2000, that kind of area, mm -hmm. they have such advanced technology. You can find it, kind of think of it as a theoretical world, um, the Earth without the Dark Ages. So it's like 50 to 200 years advanced, but still the same kind of timeline, so... They could travel across the oceans, you know, 5,000 years ago, 500 years ago. So just pushing shit apart doesn't stop humans. Humans will invent boats. If their Pokemon can't cross the water, their boats sure can. And mm -hmm. Swallow and other things that can just fly over them anyway. Right. But then you're going to mention Christoph, well, Lieutenant Surge is the only one who actually mentions this war. That's because it was a Kanto-only war. No, no, I don't. I, no, no. no. Kanto Joto to, War? No, I, what I think it is, and I think this is going to be interesting, I think we discussed this actually, is the fact is, Lieutenant Surge is the only one who brings up the war. AZ is the only one who brings up a war. They're basically the ones who were involved in wars. Everyone else, let's remember. And then you have Yuxi. What did you say Yuxi's Pokemon Century was? Well, it could wipe the memory of people, but... It could only do that by looking at them. It's not like it has some primal version that can wipe out entire areas. Or does it? Dun dun dun. Exactly. That's the whole point. You have Yuxi who can wipe people's memories. And it's been shown that they travel to other regions. <laughs> right. Why would you need these Pokemon to travel to other regions if not for the fact then to do certain jobs? You have Yuxi wiping the memories of people, except for those who are in the wars. Because the mental scars are sort of there. You can't really get rid of that kind of thing. Oh, I just remembered another thing. Yeah? Uh-huh. So, there are also two modes of extraterrestrial, not extraterrestrial, supernatural transportation. One is uh, one that was shown in the manga, you know, it exists in the game, but better explain the manga. Islands like Mirage Island. Places that literally change, like Hoopa's ability, 
change position all the time. And, you know, uh, that island could very well exist off the coast of other uh, other nations. Um, oh, and we have to talk about the whole thing where uh, certain islands are accessible by all regions or something and the similarities of that. But oh, yeah. there's also another way to travel that's much more reliable. What is the most extensive change of a map that we've ever seen happen in a Pokemon game where the actual surface of the map has changed to update a new location. Sinnoh, east of Evergrande City, there's a little tiny route with a little rock. And if you do a certain event with the Great City of Flower and Professor Oak shows up, there's a land bridge. A straight, clean, flowery bridge that goes up for a mile all the way up to equal the area of the north uh, east area um and that's where you fight shaman okay mm-hmm. so apparently entire stretches of land that are a, an eighth the size of an entire region can just sprout up from nowhere which is very useful when you think about it what if their land bridge is connecting all sorts of islands like the eon island and the Delta Island with the, I think it's called the Delta Island. With, the Oxus, uh, yeah, that one. Yeah, the Oxus. Oh. And Iron Island and um, fucking the Mew Islands uh, from from third gen, the Mew Island. Right. Like all these other islands. What if they have land bridges connecting them that people, could, that humans could unlock? All right. That, that does, and that makes a lot of sense. But I really want to go back to the Legendary Lake Trio. Yes. Looking at it, you have Uxie, of course, that makes sense. But you also have Mesprit. Mesprit could be there as well. It could provide emotional support. Because you have to say, this kind of thing would be very traumatizing. Yeah, you don't see people committing suicide in Pokemon. No, Giovanni did not commit suicide. He's in the PWT. Yeah, I know. I wasn't going to say that. But you also have Azelf. Azelf gives courage. People to move on. These, um... These three lake spirits are like babysitters patting us on the back. Basically, they literally have the exact three things needed to wipe out any sort of residual evidence of this war being around. Uh, obviously, people still know about it because of the fact that, I mean, if you participate in a war, but it's who's going to tell a kid? Exactly. Like, there's exact proof in many regions where you go up to a book and it says. Not what's in the book, but it says a 10-year-old or a 15-year-old's expression of the book. Question mark, question mark, question mark, or this would be fun for dad, or you can't understand the rest of the words on this page. Yeah. And of course, then you have Lieutenant Surge, who just has no social skills whatsoever. Yep. But that really does make sense when you think about it. All the regions were connected. They have these huge wars. They created these giant super weapons to fight in the wars for superiority over the region. Arceus gets angry, uses the legendary Pokemon to split the regions. War happens again. You have the late trios helping us out. The end. But I say it still goes on. Yes, and it goes on to... You want to send this for part two? The one with the fate? And the Uh, stuff from the decks? Oh. Possibly, but actually I was going to bring up the thing I said about the evil teams. That goes with mine. I think this would be a great exactly. for part two. Oh yeah, sure. Okay. So, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the this first may have been a few episodes. Podcast. Wait, hold up. When did we start? Okay, so that was about an hour long. So we can either upload that as one or two parts. But this next part is gonna be episode B. Not necessarily two, but B, where we talk about fate and aliens. Aliens. Goodbye, everybody. Make sure if back, back, I have to do this. If you like this video, make sure to leave a like down below. Leave a comment explaining anything you have to ask about the theory. We might actually read your comment and say talk about it next video. And if you do enjoy this video, please subscribe to the Silk Code Mob channel. We will be doing this every single week. Hopefully, and don't forget to subscribe to everyone else's channels and help support everyone Are you because. Because very none of us at this channel completely quit our own to work on this channel. We all support two channels, at least. <laughs> yeah. I'm Diggle's other half. He's Pat Plays. See you Pat's guys. Pat the ODST. Uh, fuck. Pat the Breeder. Signing off.
See you guys next time. Goodbye, everybody. Welcome to the Silk well. Mob. Fuck. Screw my outro. God, that guy was a dick.